OpenAI just released Agent Builder, which is their new app that allows you to build agents without any code. And right away, people started asking, is this the tool that finally dethrones N8N? Well, in this video, we're gonna answer that question as we put N8N and Agent Builder in a head-to-head -head competition to see how they each build the same exact agent. And the test is gonna be pretty simple. We want them to build an AI agent that can go out onto the internet, do research on stocks, and then email us the results. So let's get started and see how they compare. So here we are inside of Agent Builder. I'm gonna link a video above right now where I went through the basics of Agent Builder. We went through a demo workflow. I showed you all the tools, how it works under the hood. But if you've never used this before and you've used N8N, it's pretty much the same from like a 30,000 foot view. We have our modules, we connect them to additional modules and it kind of flows from left to right and you edit the settings by clicking on the module coming over here to the right. And so like I talked about the intro, we essentially wanna create a stock research agent that we can speak to in natural language have it go out online, find information about the stock, and then email it to us or email it to whoever I want. So the way it works in Agent Builders, you have a start module. This is essentially the same as like a chat module in NAN. okay? From there, it's gonna go to the agent. So the start module will be our request, like, hey, I want you to research Apple stock. That's then gonna go here to the agent module. Now over here on the right is where we set up all the information for this module. First of all, we have the name, so I can rename it to like stock agent, right? Then we have our instructions. The instructions is like the system message, AKA the internal logic for how we want this to work. So I could say, hey, you're an expert um, in researching stocks using the internet. Now that's pretty basic. One of the cool things about Agent Builder is you have these little um, like pencils over here on the right with a little star next to it. If I click that and I put in what we just wrote, it's actually going to, update the instructions, but better. It's as if I went to, you know, like chat GPT and was like, hey, write me a system message for an AI agent that specializes in researching stocks. So it kind of takes out that extra step of having to go to AI and write your system messages for you. It's all here all at once, which is nice. Now this is pretty basic, but you can see it's still expand, expanded upon what we wrote to start. This is something NAN does not have. So point to agent builder. We'll see over here we have include chat history. So we'll click that. That's like simple memory inside of N8N. We have our model. I don't need a full blown reasoning model for this. So we're just gonna stick with 4.1 mini, also on cheap. Now next we have our tools. So we have web search here, but I don't wanna use web search. I kinda wanna do something a little more powerful because I'm not a huge fan of OpenAI's web search. I wanna use something like Firecrawl. So if you've never used Firecrawl before, it's a really cool tool for doing any sort of web scraping or web search and even has some agentic qualities. They have an MCP server, so that's what we're gonna connect. So I'm gonna go ahead and click MCP server and you see all the default ones, right? Gmail, Outlook, including stuff like Zapier, Pipedream, all that good stuff. But we want a third-party one that's not listed, so I'm gonna go to server. We're going to call this Firecrawl. Now I need to enter the MCP URL, which I already have ready to go. And then I need to put my API key. So I added my API key, I hit connect, and this is the general flow for connecting to any API server on here. From there, it asks, do you want approval for all the tools? So if it actually uses the tool, they'll ask you in the chat, hey, do you want to use this? We're going to say, hey, I don't really need you to do that. And you can see all the different tools from Firecrawl, scrape, map, search, crawl, all that cool stuff. So we're going to do add. So now that we've added the Firecrawl server, I'm going to go back into the instructions. And I'm going to tell it explicitly, use the Firecrawl MCP server to execute web searches. So I just said, use the Firecrawl MCP server to execute web searches when asked about stocks. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test this out just to make sure that's working. So we're gonna go to preview, it brings you to this screen, and now we just talk to it like we would chat GPT. Um, can you do some research on Apple's stock for me? And well, looks like we got an error. Let's try it one more time. So can you do some research on Apple stock for me? Aired again. So what's happening here? Well, the MCP server isn't working. That's what's happening. So, all right, Firecrawl isn't working. Well, let's test out the Gmail MCP server, right? Maybe it doesn't work for third-party ones. Maybe it'll work for this Gmail one. So I'm gonna click on Gmail. And then we need to get an access token for this. So I just click here. So you brought to this screen. And what you need to do is you then need to search for the specific Gmail um, API. So I just search for Gmail and you have all these other APIs you can choose. So I will say it's actually really easy to connect to Gmail from um, Agent Builder. So I do authorize APIs, connect my account. All right, continue. 
And then I want this access token. So you're gonna say exchange authorization token for access token, copy that, come back in here, paste it, connect. Really easy, and I can see all my tools here. So another plus for Asian builders, how easy it is to get this MCP stuff up and running. So we're just gonna add everything. So Firecrawl wasn't working, so I deleted that from the instructions. So now we're gonna have to add another tool, which is gonna be the web search tool. Now the web search tool is just like the default one you would see in ChatGPT, so there's not a ton we can edit with it. All we have is like country, region, city, time zone, and context size. We're just gonna keep this all on default, so we'll hit add. So what else can we play with here? Well, we can edit the output format. Right now it's just plain text. We could specify it in JSON. We can play around with the model parameters. And then we have stuff like what to do if there's an error and do we wanna write this a conversation history? We're gonna leave this all as is. So what we've built now is we should now have an AI agent that we can speak to. It can call the web tool, go do some analysis on the stock and then email it to whoever we want, right? Cause it's connected to our MCP server. So let's go back to preview. So I'm asking, can you do some research on Apple stock and then email it to Chase? So boom, air it out again. Let's try one more time. Maybe there's just some issue with it. Air it out again. Okay, what, what actually is happening here? Why do we keep getting this error? Well, the reason we keep getting this error is because MCP actually does not work inside of Agent Builder. So if I get rid of the Gmail tool, we go back into preview and I say research Apple stock, it's going to work just fine. But this is a huge problem because, you know, this is great. It's going to give me the sources. It's going to look it up online. That's awesome. But the entire purpose of Agent Builder is agents. And the power of these agents in particular inside this walled garden that OpenAI has put us is in these MCPs, right? What we're doing now, I can do on ChatGPT. I don't care about that. I need an agent that can work with external tools, multiple external tools, you know, dynamically. And this has been up for like 24 hours at this point, and there's been crickets from OpenAI, and MCP doesn't work in any capacity, which is wild. So right now, Agent Builder is actually basically unusable. And the only thing you can use it for is stuff like this, like basic chatbot nonsense that has no real value. Now, okay, let's assume they fix this, which they should. It's crazy they actually let this go out live in this state, honestly. Um, so what does that mean? Well, that means you can create AI agents with MCPs. And that's kind of it. We're like really like pigeonholed into using MCPs, which is sometimes great, sometimes not. And like to show you the difference now, let's kind of go through the same exercise in N8N and see what we can do with it. So here I am inside of N8N, right? So we're gonna search for AI agent. We get our standard foundation, right? So we have the chat message. This is just like the start button. We're gonna add a chat model. Now, obviously with N8N, we have access to any chat model we want. But to keep it simple, we'll stick with OpenAI and we will also use 4.1 mini. Now we have memory, we can do simple memory, and we obviously have more flexibility if we wanna go like a true database route. So we're just gonna do simple memory. And now in terms of tools, okay, maybe Firecrawl is having issues. What if I just wanna use something like perplexity, right? Very easy, I add perplexity. And I think the biggest thing is that like, look at all these settings I have available to me using something like perplexity. And the fact that I can like have AI do stuff right? Like the text is going to be determined by the model. The output will be determined by the model. If we compare that to this, like what did we have with web search? It was this. Obviously this isn't enough. This isn't nearly enough if you want to create something actually powerful in a production setting. So again, you need to rely on MCPs, which don't even work right now. But again, I'm sure they'll get that up and running. So here we have perplexity. And then obviously if I wanted to do uh, email, I would attach Gmail and we'd just like that, it's essentially connected. Now, props to OpenAI, like connecting your Gmail account, your Google account in general, and it is a giant pain in the butt. You only have to do it once, but it is a pain. And the way they've set up MCP inside of Agent Builder does help with that. I will give them credit there. The other thing I'll give them props on, like I talked about before, was the system messages, right? Like they have built in AI to fill this out. And it does it. I have to do this manually down here, like, okay, you have access perplexity and Gmail, blah, 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 or go to something like Claude, copy it, paste it, get it back and put it back in there. They've put it all in one spot, which is actually really nice. I wish NNN had that. So I just wrote, you have access to perplexity in Gmail. You're an expert in stock research, connect analysis with the perplexity tool, and then send the email via the Gmail tool. So now let's test it out. I'll do open chat, open this up. All right. So we told it to do some research on Apple and then send it to Chase. 
And right away, you can also see that there's way more granular detail in the logs, right? I can see the chat. I can actually click on here under the AI agent and see both the input and output at a much finer detail level than what we had over here, right? When I asked it to, you know, again, research Apple, it's gonna do it just fine. And we can kind of see what's going on. Like it shows us the stock agent in the actual request and it gives us links and stuff. Like the output is fine, but I don't have this level of detail, including stuff like how fast is each tool being called, right? I can see the success. I can see the amount of tokens that are being used, right? So there's a lot more that I can see and also really troubleshoot because that's what's really important because this stuff never goes right when you're using it for real or at real complexity that this doesn't have. And again, I know it has evals. So it says it executed it. Let's actually just check the email real quick to confirm. And so here's the email it gave us. Obviously this looks gross, but this is something we could easily change when it comes to formatting the output, but it worked, right? And that idea of it actually working obviously is huge because this just isn't. And truthfully, right? I think this kind of head to head comparison, it should be pretty clear where I'm going to go with this. Like. The biggest thing isn't just that it's working. Like I will give OpenAI the benefit of doubt and assume they're gonna get MCP up and running. The problem is the flexibility, right? If MCP servers aren't working for whatever reason, this is where you are, you're dead in the water. MCP servers aren't working with NNN, that's fine. I have a million different ways I can attack this problem. And I think also part of the problem is you look at this and then you see a tweet like this from OpenAI and they're saying, hey, actually this was built in under six weeks and Codex wrote 80% of it. Like, wow, you don't say like, this just doesn't seem serious. Like this isn't a serious thing. Like, cause you compare these two things, like everyone got kind of wowed by some of the hype they did pre dev day and even sort of the demo on dev day. And then you go and use it for real and nothing even works. Right. And it's just like, it feels like it's 12 months away from being 12 months away. And so this is probably gonna be the last video I do on Asian Builder anytime soon, because like who in the right mind is gonna spend any time like spinning things up inside here? Remember, this is also putting you inside of OpenAI's walled garden. That garden better be awesome. That garden better be amazing for me to leave this, which gives me the flexibility of not just like the tools and stuff, but like self-hosting, local hosting, right? All the different ways I can attack these problems. And like, if you can't even come close to NNN, like, what am I doing? I might as well just be on Codex or Cloud Code. What problem is this solving? And again, this goes beyond MCP, just not even working. So I think head to head, it is even close. I think it sounded great in theory. I don't think any, you have people on Twitter saying, oh man, this is, this is killing the next trillion startups. Like this isn't killing anything. This isn't killing anything. Um, and I was kind of hyped for this because I was hoping this would kind of, you know, like, continue to, you know, widen or like increase the size of the pie that everyone's eating from with this no code stuff. And this actually just is no code, a terrible name because it doesn't even work. Um, and it has a lot of ways to go. So the head to head comparison, I don't even think there is a comparison at this point. Um, I hope that changes sooner rather than later. I can't imagine they put this much time and effort into it. I guess it wasn't that much time, <laughs> um, but I, I hope they can do something better. So. Um, that's all I have to say on that. And it definitely doesn't have to worry about this anytime soon. And I hope OpenAI kind of gets it together, um, in this respect.